Hey everyone, we are back for another toy haul video. I've got a bunch of stuff again all around me. Stuff that uh, has crept up on me again. I still haven't even gotten through the last haul's worth of stuff as far as reviews go. Uh, so I'm playing catch up on a lot of fronts. Well, we've got some old stuff, we've got some new stuff, we've got some Star Wars, some Turtles, some Motu, we've got some imports, we've got some X-Men. X-Men's very important. So let's just jump right into it. So we've got uh, the only two figures that I even remotely want in the Resistance line. I finally found these in store. Um, I've never seen them until very, very recently. So we got Von Reg and we've got Pyre. We know Pyre's getting a Black Series figure, one of the much maligned uh, Galaxy's Edge exclusive uh, figures that I'm going to have to figure out a way to get. But we've got these guys here. You know, they look unique. They're different. Uh, I haven't even watched Resistance at all. I have really no interest in it. Of all the Star Wars stuff that I truly love, I just don't really care about this show. But I like these trooper designs. So when I found them, I had to I had to snag them because they, they certainly aren't easy to get a hold of. At least not, uh, not around me. We've got the Walmart exclusive uh, Lando vintage collection figure and yeah i've got two of them a friend of mine ordered what four of them i think and all but one of them came uh all messed up in the in the box so i have the mint ca uh, card because i wanted to keep one carded and then i got one to open which is all creased and nasty and dinged up so yeah so this is the corrected version of lando the one that doesn't come with his gun for some reason but he's color corrected he's a little taller and then he's got photo reel so we might be doing a review on this guy, but uh, I'm not too sure yet. We'll see if I can amass a few more vintage collection figures rather than just doing one at a time. Uh, let's see, what do we got? We got another Star Wars, the, the last Star Wars. So we've got the Figure Arts Count Dooku. And, you know, he's, he's a web exclusive over in Japan, so he comes in the, the mailer box. But he's, he's here with the... Uh, I hate these packages. I really don't like the the weird artwork that they use on these, but I'm really excited to take a look at this guy. I know he's getting less than favorable reviews from folks, but he seems pretty good to me. I don't think he's going to wow me by any means, but uh, it's a Dooku. He's got soft goods. I think the faces look pretty good personally, but we will see once we get into that a little deeper, but I'm very excited to, to dig into that figure. Uh, we've got another import. So we've got the Majin Buu, the the Super Boo, Super Evil Boo, whichever whichever version people decide to call this one. And he looks so, so much bigger than I had thought he was. He is absolutely massive. Uh, I think Goku comes up to about, like, his elbow, maybe. This thing is truly large. And he comes with an extra head for Fat Boo, which I'm really excited for. He doesn't come with any effect pieces, I don't think. Right? But he comes with the extra head, so that's kind of cool. And he just... He looks just fantastic. This might be one of the best ones uh, this year, if not the best right now. I still haven't gotten Broly yet, so, you know, that'll change. Of course, I still have not reviewed a single Dragon Ball Z figure art in quite a while. People don't really watch them, so it's not a priority for me, but I also haven't opened a lot of them either. I have not opened any since Gotenks, I think. So I'm very, very far behind. I really need to get to it. This might be the one that I have to just dig into right away because, I mean, just look at that. It looks fantastic. It looks like a stellar figure. Uh, we've got some some Power Rangers stuff. I mean, Power Rangers is obviously very big right now, and uh, I had tons and tons of Power Rangers stuff as a kid. Uh, I was my, my world basically changed from Ninja Turtles to Power Rangers in the span of one day when Turtle when uh, Power Rangers started. So it was very much something that was always a thing for me. I mean, it still is a thing for me, but I never had all of the toys. I only had. I had a decent amount of them, but like I never had an original Megazord until I was an adult. I never had uh, I never had the original Titanus either, stuff like that. I had the Thunder Megazords and I had the Tiger Zord. I had a lot of Season 2 stuff, so yeah. But I, I never had all of the monsters either, like the deluxe figures. So I went back and I found a really stupid deal on, on a handful of them. And I realized after I got them that I didn't notice that one of them was missing his accessory, but I'll have to figure that out. So we've got some of these are like the 8-inch figures, so King Sphinx. And I just have a big fondness for these figures. They are certainly not great toys by any means, but, I mean, these are quintessential early 90s Power Ranger toys, and they very much do something for me. Uh, I've still got, like, the Perantis head figure, and I've got uh, Guitardo, and I've got the Big Lord's head because I used him in the comparison for the new figure. Uh, but these figures always were real, just really cool, and I've still got the... I've got the 8-inch uh, Power Ranger figures themselves. They're... They're on a shelf in a different room. And then I've got the, the Sockadillo. So this guy, he's the one, he's, he was one of the monsters that was created specifically for Power Rangers. This guy was not a Zeo Ranger monster. He wasn't made for Japan. So he could like roll into a ball and stuff. Um, 
it's got like a soccer armadillo thing going on and he has a he had a weapon not all of the figures had a weapon i don't think king sphinx had a weapon uh, so we got him we've got uh, babu so he looks really good he's got the kind of bendy bone wings on his back but yeah this you know one of rita's kind of goofy henchmen that never does really much of anything in power rangers except act like an idiot but couldn't not get him, especially because he's part of the lot. And then the figure that was missing the accessory is Bones. So, uh, yeah, he has a sword, and I just, I knew I knew he had a sword, but when I bought the uh, the lot of him, I just, for some reason, blanked on him. But he still looks really cool, and it doesn't necessarily matter. It's not like he's expensive. I could go buy a one in a box for 10 bucks right now uh, if I really wanted to. But this guy just looks really cool. This is one of my favorite Power Ranger villains, just because of the look. I mean, he's a skeleton. You can't really go wrong there, right? Uh, what else do we have? We've got uh, the last Overwatch figure. So we got Tracer. The last Overwatch figure that I've got that I needed to finish the review. So she'll be getting a review really, really soon. Uh, I don't have the Figma. But she looks like a pretty solid figure for someone who only wanted to spend 20 bucks on a Tracer figure. So kind of got that going for her right there. And then we got some X-Men figures. And I've already done the Beast review. But uh, I got him off of Amazon. And they shipped him, for some reason they were able to ship him without shipping any of the other figures. And then I was able to get a pre-order in on Hasbro Pulse the day before these things were supposed to come out. I figured they're still showing for me because they were in my cart, but I couldn't actually find them on the site because uh, I just never completed a transaction. So I went ahead, I need another backup order just in case. And then the next day they shipped him. My Gambit is still in limbo. He is in town, but for some reason he wasn't delivered with all of the figures. So I am still Gambitless. The one figure that I truly wanted the most, and he's not here. But I can build Caliban now because he doesn't have a Build-A-Figure piece. So we've got Forge. And I mean, all of these figures are pretty solid to me. I'm, I mean, you know, I've said it a number of times. X-Men is the the highest peak for me when it comes to marvel stuff it's always been the thing that i cared about the most when it comes to marvel and even some of the more secondary characters like forge you know this is a very nostalgic character for me because he was he was prevalent in the 80s and the 90s when i first started reading comics so this is one that's really nice to have and he he just looks like a good figure so that's pretty pretty exciting on its own just to have a new forge and we've got blink and this is one that, uh, this is a figure that definitely does something for me as well because Blink was a huge character in the Exiles comic book. And that's one of the books that got me back into comics in the early 2000s. Uh, that book absolutely drew me in right away. So, you know, she was a big member of that team. So I'm really excited to have this. I know that's not exactly everything for Blink, but that's what I think of when I think of her character. So we've got her, and I mean, she comes with all this stuff too. She's got the teleportation effects, she's got the shards. So she looks really cool. We got a Reaver, we've got a Skullbuster, and he comes with the extra heads. I don't think I have a body that's going to be able to utilize that head, though. I know a lot of folks are using the Nuke body when it comes to that extra head. I don't have Nuke, so we'll see. Uh, maybe figure out something down the road. But we've got our Deathlock reuse body here, so I'm really curious to see how he lines up to Deathlock himself. But, you know, for a, I mean, not necessarily the biggest of villains... I think he looks pretty good, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. I don't know if he really has a spot on my shelf right now, but uh, looks like a solid figure, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to dig into him no matter what. And then we've got uh, Naked Wolverine, so we got Weapon X. And outside of the fact that I think that this head is kind of eh, uh, I think the figure looks pretty cool. And I think you can take most of that stuff off of him, too. If you wanted to have some sort of a Naked Wolverine on your display, you've got an option, because that stuff definitely looks like it's able to be taken off. But he looks cool. All of the doodads and the gadgetry all over him. The translucent red cabling very much uh, works for me. And then we got Jubilee. So that's the last one, outside of the fact that I don't have Gambit still. And uh, this is this is one that kind of threw me off because I, for some reason, thought she came with an effect piece, and she definitely does not. And that's kind of a bummer. But she still looks pretty great. And of course, you got the extra head with the bubble gum. You got multiple sets of glasses in there, so you can do different things with them. It looks like so. Yeah, I mean, she looks pretty cool no matter what. It's a Jubilee figure. You gotta gotta have it. That's quintessential 90s X-Men. And then we've got this guy here. So I, I got this off of Instagram. This is the carrying case for Turtles. Uh, I just saw it and like, I need that. So let's grab it. And the guy was selling some Turtles as well. And he actually had one that I needed a replacement for. But we've got the, you know, the carrying case, like a vinyl carrying case. So you got some artwork on the, on the back. And you got Splinter there on the side. But I got a, uh, 
I got a mutagen man from him that had the card back because I have two two mutagen mans, but both of them are cracked and basically ir you can't fix them. Uh, so he had one and uh, it's pretty pristine and it has the card back, which I didn't have. That's not a huge deal for me, but for what I paid, it was a pretty solid deal. Not that this thing's expensive by any means. It's a pretty common, pretty common thing for turtles. And then we got this big guy. So we've got a uh, vintage collection TIE Fighter. This is the Walmart exclusive uh, TIE Fighter. It was like 80 bucks retail. And I said, as soon as I saw it, that's cool, but I'm never paying $80 for this. And the price tag says 40 bucks. And then people started finding them for 20 bucks, well, 19. So I went hunting and I found a, a handful of them for $19. And I bought two of them. One of them went to a friend because he couldn't find them at, at any other stores around here in town. And so I've got this one left. And now people are finding them for $5. So I feel like I've maybe jumped a gun. But I'm happy with a $20 purchase. It comes with a TIE Fighter Pilot and then, of course, the vehicle. So it seems pretty cool. And then the last thing, or things, so we've got some, uh, I got some new Super 7 stuff. So we've got uh, the latest batch of reaction figures for Motu. So we've got, uh, these are all kind of like variant figures. So this is a grayscale Man-at-Arms, but this is supposed to mimic his colors from the movie. So it's the normal Man-at-Arms figure, but done up in that kind of gray, light gray, dark gray, black color scheme that we saw for the suit in the movie, in the live action movie. Uh, we've got the, this is the one that I wanted the most, Slime Pit He-Man. So, you know, Slime Pit He-Man is a thing all over the place now. We've got the reaction figure. We've got the PowerCon exclusive classics figure coming. So you've got him there. This is the standard card art done up in a slime motif. And then on the back has got some comic artwork showing, uh, you know, He-Man being turned into a Slime Pit He-Man. And I actually got two of those. I'm going to keep one of them carded as well. With the different, some of the variants, that's what I do. Like with the Los Amos versions, I got a couple of those. We've got a Tila figure that's done up in blue and orange. And I'm not really sure what they're going for here. This is labeled as a Shiva variant of Tila. And I don't really know what that's supposed to indicate unless it's literally just like the Indian goddess Shiva. I have no idea. So if someone knows more about that one than I do, let me know. Uh, it's that same kind of weird Tila sculpt. I don't really like the face on this figure, but... Uh, she looks cool in that color scheme. And then, of course, the card art's all done up to, to reflect that. We've got uh, a new Ram Man. This is the uh, card back, the orange version. So, like, Super 7's Ultimate Ram Man that they made for Classics when they first got the license. Uh, we've got the orange version with the red pants. And then he's got his little axe down there. And then there's the card back on these, which look pretty fantastic. Who's next? Uh, we got Hordak. So this is, uh, you know, the, like, like the vintage toy kind of Hordak colors. So the blacks, the reds, the grays, and uh, the same figure, but I think it looks pretty good. I really, really, really like that Hordak figure, the first one, the one that we got at San Diego. And then the last one is uh, Merman, but he's done up in the colors from the Motu carrying case from the vintage line. And he was a really, really, really dark blue. So I think there's three or four of, of the Merman now at this point. There's the regular one. There's the one that came with the carrying case. I think there's another one too. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just a different colorway. But that's all this line is for. And then the last thing, I think this is it all together, which that's probably enough for now. My wife would agree it's probably enough, is the most recent Phantom Star Killer from uh, Super 7. So this is, uh, whichever one it is, I can't even remember. The Horned King is what it's called, I think, something like that. It's just a different colorway, so it's the same figure. Uh, I didn't get the last one, like the kind of camo green one. I just didn't really want it. But this one is very similar to the first one, but a much a darker and more saturated color. And then he's got new card art. And I just love everything about this this particular thing. Like, these are some of my favorite Super 7 reaction figures. Because the sculpt on this that guy is absolutely wild. He's got a telescoping laser sword. And just, I mean, the, the whole thing behind this is really cool. So that's it. Uh, we'll have reviews up for all of these, for sure. Uh, the Tracer figure, all of the X-Men figures. And then we'll have for Boo, eventually Dooku. I need to get started on Dragon Ball Z, so we'll do those, and I've still got other stuff to finish. I didn't do the Ghostbusters, the whichever two Ghostbusters I still have left, whichever two, the, the big foot soldiers. Still got a bunch of stuff to, to work on, work through, and then, of course, there's just tons more stuff coming. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys have gotten recently. Let me know what you think of all of this stuff, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see reviewed before anything else, and I'll see what I can do. So other than that, I'll catch you next time.